Um, so I've watched it in school. Um, yep. It was it was a lot of fun. Cool. And I think probably the first thing I sort of thought about after um, the ending and and after like 50 minutes of it settling in is that um, I sort of began the film with a lot of assumptions. So I began the film assuming that um, April was our protagonist and that we were going to root for her throughout the film and that Keith, Keith, was, Keith was a bad guy. Keith was um, our antagonist. And I just, I liked the way the, at the end of it, I was like, no, I don't think that was entirely right. And I think, yes. I think maybe if you asked 20 people, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all if 10 of them said that Keith was, Keith was the protagonist. Keith's out there doing, um, you know, fighting for what's right. Um, with that, with a bit of a, with a, with a fervor that's, it's hard to, it's hard to sort of understand what would motivate him to that level, but, I think, yeah, I just like, I like the way that had uh, made me feel the end of the film, make, make me sort of look back at the film and start to question all the things that I saw in there. I was just wondering if you talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I think I, I think that um, the morality situation is um, fluid, I guess, is the best way to say it. But um, the movie was designed to sort of make you question some of the assumptions that you came in with, um, hopefully in a not unpleasant way. Um, it, it, it does sort of challenge you to think about, you know, who's right and who's wrong and, and who's standing up for what. And, and, you know, just because one person is wrong doesn't mean that the other person isn't more wrong or wrong also. Um, you know, I, I suppose it's reflective of some kind of worldview that I have where, you know, pretty much everyone's doing bad, immoral things all the time. So you sort of have to judge, you know, where you draw the line and, and how far, and when you're trying to punish an immoral act, how far is too far and, you know, is it really fair if if um if you cheat if you if you cheat in like a system that is essentially rigged you know how how to what degree is that uh, immoral or illegal or whatever um, so I'm I'm glad that 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 uh, you were questioning how you felt about the movie in the end that's the that's the goal that I was going for I was trying to make people um you know think about the assumptions that they have um, so yeah you had the the right reaction I guess if that's one way of putting it. Okay, cool. um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the casting process because I felt like um, Celine and Jonathan just hit it out of the park. Um, um, Celine um, is so much does does so much in um, the film. Um, she's so so much more than what you initially assume, and. And again, as I said, as I mentioned before, uh, when you see uh, Jonathan playing Keith, is that you see you assume like uh, he's angry, but he's almost he's almost in a crusade of sorts, which I guess comes from um, maybe starting to um, question his lot in life uh, coming that coming towards the end. And looking out, looking for jobs, not being successful, and maybe questioning what is university and is this what I really want to devote my life to? So I guess so maybe that's a bit of a question about of why he goes as hard as he does um, during the hearing. So just want to talk uh, about the casting process and stuff. Um, uh, the, the, why he goes, why the character goes as hard as he does is, I think, is, um, well, like you said, a bit of a crusade, you know, some people have very strong beliefs about things that mm -hmm. um, others certainly don't. Um, every crusade seems, you know, I, I guess the actual crusades, I, you know, you yeah. can look at and be like, yeah. why did you, why did you go so mm -hmm. hard at that? But, um, but, you know, people have deep seated beliefs about what they feel is right and wrong, and they will go to extraordinary lengths to defend them, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I suppose that's, part of the explanation as to why uh why he's motivated to do all these like um very extreme things um, in terms of the casting jonathan was a, a friend of mine and and um and i didn't know he had this sort of side to him until i watched another film he was in which is called 21 and over where he plays a bully um he's really the kindest man i've ever met and, and then i realized that he could play a jerk pretty good so once I wrote this part, I, I offered it to him, and he um, thankfully liked the part and was uh, took part in the movie. Celine, we had to audition, you know, pretty much every Asian actress in Toronto, and then finally 
she was the only one who I thought had like a, the right amount of like mystery, but also like rage and anger and also sensitivity. I, I, she really stood out from everyone else here in the city. And, um, you know, it was a pretty easy choice for me to pick her by the end of it. Um, so yeah, there's two different ways we got the actors um, through, you know, of fr friendship and um, also through, um, you know, the, the audition process. I like that you mentioned uh, mystery. We're talking about um, Celine's performance because that's definitely what I felt um, this past, this past, uh, as you see, as you see various, what the things that she has done to ensure that she um, graduates and you see what, what might be a tough sell for other actresses and she just pulls it off and you go, oh yeah, that's, that's definitely her. We, it's just that I wasn't paying enough attention to see that that's what she, she was capable of. So yeah, just, I thought just um, had that. I forget to wonder and um, what I felt about watching it is that this is a watching it and looking back is like this is a feature which is sort of chock full of unlikable people. Usually movies um, sort of sell you on like this person and follow their journey, but we get um, sufficient background to everyone of the major players. So. Um, the, the uh, members of the members of the hearing, um, the reporter, and we get and we see enough of them that we can question them and wonder. I'm not sure if I particularly would like to hang out hang out with them. And it sort of it remi it's, it reminds me because I do remember my time at higher education, now, and we'll talk about that later. But um, yeah. it does it does make me think. It does make me think. Wow, these guys! Oh, this is this is a horrible place. Why, why am I here? But at the same time, it's I think it's I think it's um, to be commended that all these people are unlikable. Yet I still want to. I still definitely want to watch. And I think the only person who comes out of it um, looking good is the um, the student rep aide. Yeah, and he doesn't even make yeah. it to the end of the film. No, no. He doesn't make it to the end of the story because he was like a good person pretty much you know i was like i was like this this movie's not for you sir you should you should leave at some point um yeah no uh thank you you know i, I think it's part of uh, building a story around like a story that's a mystery or like you know there's some kind of uh riddle not riddle but there there's a it's like a whodunit situation so i think building a movie around that is enough to keep the audience engaged so that you're allowed to sort of have these pretty unlikable characters, but I, I hope that the characters are still like interesting and, you know, relatable. Um, but yeah, I think that, um, I think that, I think I was trying to make a movie where people were not necessarily unlikable, but do unlikable things, which, you know, I find myself doing all the time. Um, and I still have to hang out with myself all the time. So I, I think I found those characters very relatable because they weren't necessarily bad people, but they did they did things that compromised themselves, which is um, something that I think many people can relate to, myself included. Yeah, uh, I might have that. I'm just, uh, I think it was particularly of note with um, the Professor Allen, is that um, I could I could remember someone like that. When I was out of university, <laughs> so like this incredible, an incredibly charismatic guy. Um, yeah. Everyone, you see, everyone got along. I mean, we used to have a um, a smoky room. That's how long. That's how long ago I went to university. Yeah, a smoky yeah, room yeah. <laughs> at university, and he would be there, and he'd always have, and usually have a, a few of his fans, the students who would go around and hang out because he was a funny guy. But then I can remember I had a class with him, and something, and and he's a bit of a joker, and he and he made a joke. Um, for me, it just went too far. And I actually had to go and make a complaint to student services about it. Yeah. To which he, you know, eventually came back and he, um, you know, and he said so and everything. But I did, you just see that I, th I think he feels like he felt like he could probably get away with much because he was that popular. Because everyone thinks, oh, he's that he's that great guy. So I just wondered, yeah. I just wondered, sort of expand upon that. It's like, why did you choose higher education for your debut feature? Well, I, I suppose I, I, I mean, I spent a long time in university and law school. So that was a big part yeah. of my life, literally like eight years of my life. And, um, you know, it was always something that I suppose growing up as an Asian kid, I was told more than other kids that like, if you did well in school, then everything else in life would fall in place. And then 
you know, at some point I discovered that wasn't true. Um, and so I blamed school for that, unfortunately. And it was just always, it always seemed like, it always seemed like a place that was selling you a lie. And, you know, the, and I didn't realize it was a lie until I graduated and realized, you know, it's really hard to find a job and, and, you know, my education might not be as useful as I thought it was. And so, and, and it's also full of like these interesting characters. Like I know I have some academics in my life and people, I just think that they take themselves very seriously for people who devoted their life to being an academic. Um, I thought that universities in general took themselves very seriously. And I, I thought that if I could use, make a movie in that setting, I could have some fun with it because I think people who take themselves way too seriously are really funny. And especially people who, at the end of the day, really don't have that much impact on the world, I would say, um, but who think that they're really, really important. You know, I think that makes for interesting characters and, uh, and funny characters as well. Um, the, the protagonist in the movie, April Chen, she is going to go out and make an impact on the world through her uh, technological yeah. abilities, whereas everyone else here is going to stay in university and, you know, grow old and, you know, not, not really do much. And so I, I thought that was just an interesting contrast. Um, yeah, but primarily it was because you know, this, this idea of the university always looms so important in my mind. And then at some point it stopped being so important. And I, I think there might've been just some residual resentment or something inside of me that, that made me want to tell this sort of story that made the university look in a way that uh, it usually does, isn't portrayed in movies, which is as like a good thing. I wanted to make it look like a bad thing. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I feel a bit called out by taking yourself seriously. I spent two years um, as a sabbatical officer, so running the students' union after university, and we definitely took ourselves far too seriously at times. <laughs> that. Yeah. I mean, but then I like um, probably one of, one of my best friends now who I met playing uh, World of Warcraft. Um, she was um, just pretty, seemed to be just at home, just doing her thing. Yeah. Um, and then and then suddenly she just announced to one day when I was talking to her, she was going to university. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, I think she's probably going in maybe just a, just about a mature student, so probably going in like 22 or something. And mm -hmm. next thing next thing I know, now she's um, currently she just doing her PhD and yeah. working around uh, the issues of trying to do a PhD during Corona, which sort of definitely yeah. wasn't what I would, I would have suspected for her back when she was playing a paladin. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it shows uh, just sometimes, I think some, it's, it's good to see like something for her that when, that when she talks about her time at university and um, just, I think she took like, um, it's a science degree and how much fun she had and the experiment she does now. And I can contrast that with how I felt about university, which was, um, it was really a choice. My parents said, yeah, go, go to university and then, then you can get a job from there. And it didn't yeah. really work out that way. So I got obviously come from um, the British um, higher education, which isn't anywhere near as bad as uh, the American one in terms of um, debt, but still comes with enough debt that makes you think about it and think about, <laughs> yeah <laughs> think about well things. i come from the canadian one there's not a lot of debt here either but um but yeah no there's there's just enough that's just enough to make you think about it yeah yeah so this is yeah. same figure that same thing with ours i think i think there was a push sort of just as i was going to university when they changed from um doing what we used to have grants so like your parents could go to university and the government would pay the and pay the whole thing yeah and to to us where we would we would pay it back and just to sort of the fundamental change that meant because it now meant that um students sort of like um who are my age and younger who came with it they very much look at it as an investment so where yeah. what where are my computers what why do these chairs look so ratty what, what where's my yeah. money going it's, it's very much became a customer thing and which i think was i think was a bit of a um shake up for you know universities and uh, themselves and and especially with lecturers i felt that they yeah. suddenly they got a bit of a culture shock when she started treating it as a transaction so it was just it was yeah. so that's what made me when um i got the email about this for oh yeah i want to i want to see where this goes i want to see what this um is about because i yeah higher education is a special place uh, for me because i felt like yeah. I, I did learn a lot and became a lot more outgoing 
because I was a very shy child and university yeah. uh, definitely helped me with that. But as I get you on, I, um, obviously Hollywood, um, North News, we do, all we do is talk about Canadian stuff. So I'd just like to get your ideas on what um, examples of, I don't know, recent films or recent TV in Canada that you feel um, really shows um, Canada in terms of representation in terms of you look at this and goes that actually looks like a kind I've heard of as opposed to sometimes you watch something and go yeah that's a, that's a fairy tale on TV that doesn't yeah. make sense of reality so anything you can just tell to our um, readers they might go and check out themselves yeah definitely I, I mean my friend's uh, film Ricky Tolman's movie Run This Town which was I'm not sure if you saw that one it was about the it was uh, set during the Rob Ford era in Toronto where um you know, our mayor was uh, allegedly to have been purchasing and smoking crack. Yeah, and it, 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 it's not, it's I not really about, story, it's yeah. not, yeah, so it's it's not about Rob Ford. It's about mm -hmm. the sort of pe younger people around Rob Ford. So people who work for Rob Ford, journalists mm -hmm. who are pursuing the story and um, people who are just surrounding the scandal uh, of this sort of elder generation really taking advantage of his privilege to a high degree and the effects that it sort of has on, the younger people around him and the people who are trying to make a living and name for themselves in their own industry and in their own work. Um, I, that, that one really represented not only the city in Toronto that I know, the country of Canada that I know, but also, you know, my age group um, living in the city and, and the struggles and anxieties that are sort of plaguing us. And I, I, I think it had a, a lot of similarities to my movie. We were in the same movie, film festival, actually. And so I, I, I would recommend Run This Town to anyone yeah. who wants to see a version of Canada reflected that I think is very accurate to today's um, today's modern world. Okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. Um, I think that's that's all. That's all I have. I'm going to to thank you uh, for making taking cool. some time for us to talk about yeah, your excellent you. film and just to tell thank everyone you. who's uh, watching that to take, take go watch it um, for the U for UK viewers. You can watch it as part of Amazon Prime. Yep. Um, the US, you US can get it uh, via iTunes, and I'll obviously put, I'll put some links in on down below. Canada yeah. iTunes as well. Canada iTunes as well. Canada yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. Right. <laughs>